hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel and in this video we'll be making so this one has a long name as well that i'm probably going to butcher and not say right um but it's quetzalcoatl quetzalcoatl i'm gonna put the word here <clears throat> i'll be calling him quetz for short because <laughs> i'm not gonna say that over and over throughout the entire video because I will just butcher that but yes that is who we are going to be making today he is from Aztec culture and is a deity and as far as I know they believed he was the creator of their people so he's pretty cool he's very involved this is a very long video so buckle up because there's a lot going on and let's just jump right into it even though the video has already jumped right into it. This voiceover is going to jump right into it. Yes. So the first step is to just sculpt the head since he's a serpent. He ain't got no feet. So I start with a lump of tinfoil that I've squashed into the rough head shape that I'm going for. I do this for a few reasons. The first is that it's going to save me a lot of clay. Um, with how big his head was, I can't imagine how much clay I would have had to use just to get the size that I was going for. It also helps to bake more evenly in the oven, again, because there's not as much clay. It's not at risk of either under baking or cracking more than if you use just straight clay. So it's good to always start with a tin foil base. And then I'm just going to cover that tin foil with a layer of clay and then start pushing it around to start to get the features that I'm going for so that I can later uh, sculpt all the details that I want. And as I always say, <clears throat> references people, I use so many different references, different drawings, different things that I was finding for head shapes that I wanted. I mean, for crying out loud for this one specifically, I used the Harry Potter Basilisk, um, the movie version and I based a lot of the creature off of that because I wanted him to have that head shape but just using a bunch of different things that you find as inspiration or just straight anatomy references are always just a good way to start any sculpture you know they're always going to help you see things that you may not see if you were just going to free sculpt it for this one in particular I did make my own glass eyes for that I still I'm debating whether or not to make a tutorial for it or not but um if you don't make your own etsy has tons like when i first started using these i was just buying them all off etsy if you just look up glass eyes or glass cabochons they have loads and loads of different eyes and different sizes for you to choose from this one specifically I believe was 12 millimeter eyes, but you can buy them in all different sizes. So if you wanna make big sculptures, little sculptures, they have a huge selection. So if I decide to make a tutorial, then you know, you'll know you have the option to make your own. But if you're just starting out, it might just be easier to buy some off of Etsy if you're really interested in getting these. Throughout this uh, sculpting process, you will see me using a bunch of different sculpting tools. Um, they are not necessary. Let me be the first to tell you that if you're looking at this video and you're thinking, well, I can't sculpt because I don't have sculpting tools, you are totally false. I started with just a needle and my fingers. And honestly, you can get away with just your fingers. Um, they do help, but they are totally not necessary. I say only get them if you have the extra coin to spend on them. They do make things easier, but again, they're not necessary.
for his feather-like horns, I'm using a different type of clay, and I'm realizing I didn't even mention what the first clay was. The gray clay is Super Sculpey Medium, and the beige clay that you see me using is Cost Clay. Now this clay, when it bakes, will still remain super flexible, which I just absolutely love. It's perfect for things that are more fragile, like horns or claws, or like if you're sculpting wings or just anything thin, flowers even. It's just, it's perfect for that kind of stuff because once it bakes, it just remains super flexible. And I don't know what sorcery this company is, is doing to make clay like this, but it is absolutely amazing. And I can't wait for it to come out as like retail because as far as I know, they're still in production. I just got some as beta testing. But I just, guys, when this comes out, just trust me. Just, just buy it tons. It's, it's amazing. So I totally cheated when it comes to making the scales for this guy work smarter, not harder. I took a piece of uh, hard clay and I pretty much took my dotting tool, just made a bunch of dots into it that made it look like scale texture. And then I just stamped it on the sculpture all over the place until it looked like how I wanted. It totally works. It totally looks like I sculpted it. I'm not a cheater, I'm just working smart. <laughs> Once he's all sculpted to how I like him, I bake him in the oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 45 minutes. And once that's all done and I've attached him to his long armature, which are ball and sockets, and I don't know if you guys have ever seen ball and sockets on my channel. You might have, I honestly can't remember if I've used them. I probably have used them, but they're just like wire except that they never break and they bend a lot easier. So for like a long snake like this, they're absolutely perfect for. But to build up the body, I'm using quilt batting. It comes in these long sheets that I cut into strips and I just wrap them around over and over and over on the body until it's built up to how I want. Now, as I always mention, you want to make sure that you're not building up the body quite as thick as uh, you actually want because when you add your fabric, it's gonna add a bit of girth to it. So it's going to make it um, bigger than what you would want. So always make sure when you're building up the body to go a little skinnier than what you actually want because the fur's gonna add a bit or whatever fabric you're gonna use, it's always gonna add a little bit. And let me tell you, this guy is four feet long. So uh, I'm not hand sewing him. That, that just seems like a total nightmare. So I'm using my sewing machine that I hardly ever use and paid a bunch of money for to use constantly, but I, I don't really use it. <laughs> I can't sew. Did, did I tell you guys I can't sew? Can't, I hate hand sewing, but I can't figure out a sewing machine to save my life. So it just, it's just a fun time. But anyways, I'm cutting two pieces of fabric. I use like a faux scale leather for his underbelly and then I use like a short pile of fur for his sides and I'm just pinning that together and then running it through the sewing machine.
once one side is sewn, I go ahead and pin the um, unsewn sides together and then I run the sewing machine through that. And then what I did is I cut down the center of the fur fabric because I ended up wanting to add a whole nother piece. Like I wanted longer furs to give him kind of like a mane going down his entire body. So I ended up just cutting down the center of the fabric fur and then cut out a slit for more fabric to go in. It's it's so hard to explain sewing because like just the, just watch the video because I I for the life of me don't know how to explain it to people. It's just you just go for it because that's my method. You, you go for it. So because I'm going to be airbrushing this one a bunch of different colors, what I tried to do is I tried to use masking tape to mask off different sections that I don't want to be airbrushing currently. Now, in retrospect, I probably should have doubled up my masking tape because I did get some of the green uh, paint onto the main, which I didn't want. But because it's such a light layer of it that it didn't really show up when I ended up airbrushing it the other color, so that's good. But just make sure that if you're going to use masking tape, you mask very well so you don't get um, mist spray on whatever you're not trying to get on. But speaking of airbrushing, yes, I am airbrushing this entire piece. I am using a dual action gravity feed airbrush. Um, there's not much to say about that. You can get them pretty cheap on Amazon and stuff. I think the one I bought is like $30 just because I clogged mine so much. So I'm so scared to buy the expensive ones because then that's just going to be a waste of money. But maybe it won't clog if I spend that much money. Who knows? I'll report back to you when I eventually uh, bite the bullet and get one. As long as you're pretty light with your layers and you let everything dry and brush it out in between, you have a much less risk of making your fur have like a different texture or something. Like, it takes a bit of practice, but I've gotten to the point where the fabric doesn't change hardly at all, if, if at all, because of how light I make my layers and how many layers I do. It does take a lot of time, but it's so much faster than if you're going to either hand sew all these colors or if you're going to like dye it with like a paint and uh, brush because that, that's another method but that's a lot more tricky. For painting him, I am just using a bunch of different brands of acrylic paint. Please don't think that you need to stick to one brand or one brand rules them all. Um, you can get Folk Art, you can get Liquitex, you can get Apple, Apple is it Apple Barrel or Apple Bottom from Walmart? Like you can get so many different kinds. I'm just using any type of acrylic paint. And I'm just painting a darkish green and black on him. And then I'm gonna come back in and hit the highlights.
And to do that, especially with green, it actually helps if you add a little bit of yellow to the green to make it more bright. Cause if you just add white to it, it's kind of, it kind of dulls it down. So if you add a bit of yellow, it still keeps the green like a bright color. And you just want to have very little paint on your brush and just go over your entire sculpture just to hit all the raised points. And so it makes, um, like instantly it just makes it look so much better it, you have the really dark shadows and then you have the nice highlights so that you can see all the details that you sculpted I mean, don't worry if you get some paint all over your glass eyes. I do it all the time. You just have to scrape it off with a tool or a needle or even your finger. Um, just make sure you're not going rough enough that you're actually going to scratch the glass because then that's a problem, but otherwise you're fine. So to make the like headdress feather crown around uh, the top of his head, I took a piece of felt, um, like a little half circle of it, just so I had something to attach all the feathers to. And I'm just slowly gluing all the feathers in a row, building them up to how I like. Um, this was actually pretty fun. It is time consuming because I sometimes have to cut all the feathers so that they look all even and stuff. But it was a pretty fun uh, little project to do. I did also get all these feathers off of Etsy. I actually think I got the, the orange ones from the craft store, but all the other ones are from Etsy. I didn't film this because I mostly forgot, but I also repeated this entire process for his tail as well.
Now, the wings are going to be the hardest part to explain, so please forgive me because I'm still figuring out different ways to do them, trying to find different methods and stuff, but this is currently how I do them. I print out a wing template. If you just Google like bird anatomy or stuff, you can usually find uh, drawings of wings and stuff, and I printed it out to the size that I actually wanted his wings to be. And using that, I'm cutting a bunch of pieces of stiff felt that I bought from the craft store and I'm laying it on top of the template and cutting each feather to match all the feathers on this template. It is so time consuming. Please, if you're going to do this, be prepared that this is going to take a long time to do both feathers. It is a lot of process, a lot of process. It is a long process, but you know, of course, the end result is pretty cool. You have some realistic looking wings, you know, but yes, please be patient with yourself. I'm pretty sure I lost a few brain cells to me. <laughs> I should probably take more breaks than I did, but just make sure you're taking it nice and easy because this is a lot of work. But yeah, I just cut it felt pieces the entire length for all the primaries on both wings and then repeated that process for all the secondary smaller feathers that go on top of the primaries. And then because I don't want them to go flying everywhere, I, since I am going to airbrush them, I put them all on masking tape, just the edges, so that they won't move as much when I go to airbrush all of them. Just how I cut a felt piece for the feathers to stick to for the head piece, I'm also um, using that same logic to make a platform for the feathers to glue to. I'm just using the um, the template, like, I don't know how else to explain it, but like, you see like a chicken wing and it's just that, just that little bit without the feathers, that's the part I cut out so that I can attach all the feathers to that. I totally just made like a chicken gesture with my hands. You can't see it, but I'm going to explain this to you. I'm totally just making a chicken, <laughs> chicken gesture right now. Once I'm ready to glue all the feathers, I take the template and my little platform thing I made and I'm lining them all up so that I can glue the feathers next to each other in the same way that the feathers show on the template so that they all line up how they're supposed to.
And once all the primaries are done, I just start gluing the um, secondaries on top of them. Now I did kind of just freehand this because at this point you can't really see the template. So you just kind of look back at it. Where does it dip and where does it go lower? And you know, you just try to be mindful of where you're gluing things. So to actually cover the top of the wings, I'm going to be using um, faux fur fabric. Now I took the <laughs> the chicken the chicken wing part and um, I traced it back and forth on itself, and then just cut that out. And then I trimmed it very very short because I don't want the wing part like these are supposed to be the little feathers, but I'm just having a workaround because I don't even want to think about how I would make a bunch of little feathers so I'm compromising and making that out of fur but I'm trimming the fur um, way down so that it doesn't um, look that bulky. And also since apparently my camera decided to die right as I started, I did airbrush the entire thing green. But as soon as I start airbrushing, my camera was just like, nope, bye. <laughs> And after all of that work, it is finally finished. If you guys stuck around for the entire 30 minute something video, thank you so very much. I greatly appreciate it. Um, this guy will be up for sale in my shop if anyone's interested, as well as a few other things that I have in my shop. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm still sticking around and I will see you guys in the next one.